Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Beth. Yeah. Uh, I'm just, just so happy to be here. Uh, this is more like a homecoming for me. You know, about, I uh, can't believe that it was uh, so many years ago. I uh, landed at the Dallas Fourth Airport in 1992, in February. And then later I went to uh, the University of North Texas, finished my Master uh, of Fine Art degrees there. So it's so excited for me to uh, see so many old friends show up. Um, I'm very grateful for all the support, you know, from back then and until now. I feel like I'm very fortunate uh, to have this opportunity to come back. Um, anyway, about the, the, the works at the, in, the, in this show, uh, most of them are done either uh, this year or last year. There are a couple of pieces done in uh, 2010 and 2011. So just to give you a, a very brief introduction, um, uh, uh, obviously all the, all the paintings have something to do with newspapers, three different ways of uh, dealing with the same subject matter. But uh, they have something in common, that is that uh, each painting is always based on uh, found objects. So um, the, in the first series of uh, new newspaper paintings I've done, uh, this is uh, an example from you know, a series that I started earlier in uh, 1998. But the, the, the painting is a recent piece. It's actually from this year. And there's a, another piece at the end of this wall on the, on the left. Uh, this small painting is also from uh, the same group. And it's a group you know, that, uh, in which I, I would go to a library and photograph stacks of newspapers uh, the way they are arranged, or the way they are maybe casually stacked by librarians. So uh, then I'll take, a, take photographs of the newspaper stacks and then go back to the studio and make a painting based on the source photos. So later I call this group, which is mostly, you know, uh, kind of more monochromatic, uh, somber, and uh, they're more, like, more or less like traditional still lives. Uh, I, I gave it a general name called the silent flow of daily life, you know, as if those, you know, big noise, uh, epic events have, uh, as time has passed, those events have been forgotten, you know, colors, colors are fading, and so on. So this is the f uh, two examples from the first group, starting from uh, 98. And then later on, I would zoom in uh, to the, the newspaper stacks and um, focus on an extreme close-up of the, st the, the, the stack with the folded end. And uh, that's the beginning of a series called uh, Fragmentary Views. So uh, one of the examples is, his, uh, is here, the largest piece. So a stack of uh, uh, Chinese newspapers from Guangzhou. And there's another piece on the opposite side. It's next to the, the table with all the glasses. So anyway, uh, again, the idea is to find a stack of newspaper uh, as arranged by librarians. So you get a glimpse of what's going on in a certain period of time. But you never get a full picture. You get a little bit of information here and there. Just, this is the way we perceive world events these days, you know. Um, I remember one writer talked about this group as uh, the experience of looking at a painting like this is kind of like holding a remote control uh, and flipping through the, the channels, you know, watching TV news. And so I think this was a, a very good uh, analogy uh, to the kind of experience. So anyway, in, in this painting, you can get a glimpse of the, uh, uh, you know, some tragic and sometimes epic events mixed with, uh, you know, daily life. Um, so the same happened with the, the, the painting over there. So in about uh, 2008, I wanted to, you know, I came up with a different idea to, to deal with this uh, situation of information uh, and perhaps confusion of information that we got from the media. And that was uh, what I call both sides now series. Uh, and the idea is to find an existing, an existing sheet of newspaper, uh, you know, a given issue, and, uh, you know, remake that paper based on that object, remake that, uh, that sheet of newspaper using paint, you know, on canvas. So, you know, the newspapers are, uh, are usually printed on thin paper, so you can flip through the pages, sometimes you see the, the, you know, text or images on the back sort of showing through. And when you hold it against light, you see that clearly. And for me, it is uh, it's a very interesting experience to be translated. So anyway, um, I would uh, flip through, you know, hundreds of uh, newspapers and then find the ones uh, 
a, a page with interesting combinations, uh, you know, the, of the content from the back and the front. Uh, so I would um, then start by painting the, the, the text and image uh, from the back, which one piece in it. Uh, maybe we can, we can look at that piece first. We can look at it later. So um, to paint the, the, the t uh, images and the text on the, on the back reversed and simplified. And after finishing doing that, I'll add a layer of uh, semi-transparent acrylic paint over it uh, in a color that uh, in a color that matches the actual color of the newspaper, and then paint the image, uh, you know, step by step on the front, and then add the text. And uh, if you look at the, the 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 main photo, the I mean the main image on the front of the newspaper is often done, uh, you know, fairly loosely. Uh, only bigger way you sort of see it as photographic, but up close they are, they are uh, obviously handmade images. I want to set that in contrast with a, a graphic quality uh, of the, uh, the the text, you know, the headlines and uh, and the, the the article on the side or on top, and the images from the back. All of those uh, I want to have a, a you know a character of mechanical reproduction, and it's what newspaper is about. Um, so there's a, in, in my catalog, the, the biggest one on the desk, uh, you know, it's the, the one this big, um, there was a page ex showing the different stages of uh, a painting, starting from the back of the paper, you know, to the, to the side and then to the front. So uh, it's, a, it's kind of a time consuming, labor intensive process uh, for each piece. And so that basically, I, I hope that gives you an idea of how this work, uh, come about. Do you have any questions? Uh, could you talk about um, studying with Vernon Fisher and how it made you approach the idea of that flat surface? He, he paints photos that look like photos. He paints blackboards. He paints diagrams that look like they come from a, you know, a, a technical manual. Mm -hmm. He paints uh, maps and such. Um, did he have an effect on the way you're looking at what the, the surface of the picture plane is? Yeah, I, well, I think, always think that uh, uh, Werner has been uh, incredibly, um, you know, important in my early career. And uh, particularly, he was so helpful uh, in my understanding of uh, contemporary art. Because coming from China in 92, I had not uh, learned much about it, and I had, uh, you know, uh, I didn't put things in, in context, uh, so to speak. But anyway, in terms of, uh, I, uh, when I started to make work um, I, uh, at, at, in graduate school, um, I um, chose to, to return to figurative uh, style. Uh, before in China, I was experimenting with abstraction, you know, and calligraphy and so on. But I returned to uh, figuration, and I also was uh, studying photography at the same time. And my paintings always sort of uh, remains, uh, maintains a reference to photography. And in that, uh, I, uh, after, the, uh, I think it was the second year, then I became aware of Vernon's work. Uh, but um, I must say that I didn't try to um, follow my <laughs> master. It was, uh, at the beginning, I, I mean, I tried different subjects, and then I, the first group of uh, work that is more mature, I think, is uh, the library series, you know, uh, paintings of books. And although they're about text, but they, they don't really have any text in the work. They don't really have any specific narratives. Uh, they are based on photographs that they also owe a lot to the history of painting. And I also uh, use, uh, I use uh, news photos, uh, docu documentary uh, film steals, or video steals, and um, I always uh, care much about content. Content is always important for me, you know, social, political message is always important for me. Uh, anyway, uh, it, was, it was after leaving graduate school that I started to, to paint newspapers. So all this happened, the earliest painting from this series started from 98. And of course we maintained close contact, and uh, when I was starting to use, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, use uh, a mechanical way, which is you know, to cut stencils for the letters. I got a lot of uh, in, uh, use helpful tips 
uh, from Vernon because he does a lot of that. Uh, I'm sure he's so much better with that, that technique. Uh, but the, the idea is, uh, I think, I'm trying to think about what's the most important thing I, I get from, from my experience in the States. That is, you know, art has to, um, to have a conceptual base, to, uh, it has to engage the mind, you know, it has to be related to a, a bigger social or, or historical or political context. That's my general, uh, you know, uh, take on art. You just answered my question, which was what's behind all of that? The emotional, <laughs> mental, part, not the technical aspect, but clearly there's a, a message that, like, we need to think about what's going on in, in our social and economical, or just the wars that we have on all levels. I mean, it, I see that in your painting for years, that you're trying to get us, or I feel like it's like a, a wake up. We need to pay attention to what's going on in the smallest ways. Can you, you talk about that? Oh, well. Um I think that uh, both uh, some some of my paintings are viewed as being a little more hermetic or you know more neutral, like the the paintings of books. But I think they could be. I mean, in in the context of other works uh, related to the uh, to uh, world events of uh, book burning or censorship, I mean, it could become it could have a, a political uh, undertone as well. It's like well, I see war and peace all over this room with Mandela and all the pictures and images with the bombs and the wars here and and this going on and it's all expressed in paper and paintings. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. There is. I think it's uh, as to conceive a show, um, to make a group of work for for an exhibition. I do have like you know uh, in my mind like certain uh, subject or content relate. Uh, they are related to each other. But also to present like different uh, perspectives on the so on the same material. Um, I sort of try to think about that to have a kind of a di dialogue between works as well as a kind of unity. So it is uh, what what you what you say is, is exactly like you know the the theme of uh, war and peace, which is big. But uh, you maybe <laughs> say something about it. Um, and in fact, you know, I, I did not, um, after finishing this, I had to look up some, um, you know, actually, uh, I, I don't read German at all, so I had to figure out what's exactly going on. It was the, I was more taken by the visual com combination of different news photos in, in these paintings. But these, uh, both war pictures, uh, they are all based on photographs uh, taken in Syria. And uh, so this is a, a, a Syrian soldier, um, you know, holding his, his gun uh, inside a damaged, uh, a damaged shop in a uh, Syrian city. And uh, you, I mean, this one is uh, probably a little bit harder to get. You want to look at the other painting of newspaper first, and then come back look at this. You maybe then it's easier for you to see the blocks of text, you know, uh, showing through the, the, the front image, and you get a little bit of, uh, you know, the, uh, uh, the, the, the image on the back, but everything's more ambiguous, I think. I, I'm personally quite excited about the direction where this painting is going. Like, uh, you know, it's uh, the, the way that the, the main image is stirred up or is uh, uh, interfered by what's going on on the back and the text. I think it's, uh, it's more ambiguous. And, it's, also, it's a frightening scene, but at the same time, it is uh, also kind of romantic and uh, color-wise uh, be beautiful. Charles, I have a question. Yeah. You, uh, you maintain two studios, one in California and one in Beijing. Yeah. Do you consciously think about the work or the content of the work that you make in California versus the work that you make in Beijing? Do you feel that you have to filter some of the things you make in Beijing for, or do you feel that you yeah. have the freedom to make no. the work you want to make in both studios? Yeah. Or do you feel like, gosh, this is something I have to save and mm -hmm. do mm -hmm. in 
Northern California and I, I can't right. tackle this yeah. in Beijing? Or do you feel like you can tackle anything? I feel free to uh, do anything that, that is, you know, that I, I care for, right? Uh, either in, in San Francisco or in Beijing. Um, well, um, for specific shows, I may make pieces that would uh, speak to uh, the audience there. Uh, particularly like when I, uh, when I did shows in China, there was one exhibition I did in uh, 2013 in Beijing. I, uh, I work in the Beijing studio for the whole summer, and then I did a project based on uh, Weibo images, you know, internet uh, images. And um, Weibo is an is extremely influential social platform and uh, sort of grassroots uh, news source in China. Everybody has a Weibo account, and, and it's, it's so influential, has a huge following. Um, anyway, so that was uh, going on in China. I wanted to, to do something about it. So I set up my own account and I downloaded a lot of uh, news photos focusing on pressing social issues there. And uh, so I, I make this um, a group of paintings on alum aluminum. It's again could be found in the, uh, in the big catalog on, on the desk. And I did an installation. And those issues, those, those topics, are very familiar to the Chinese audience. They'll be able to walk in and say, oh, who is that and what's happening? And they laugh, you know. I feel like they walk communicate with the audience. And when, when, when part of that installation came to New York uh, and was, uh, you know, rearranged in a small room, I think a lot of the New Yorkers may not get that much out of it. So there is, uh, in a way, it is uh, affected by, uh, you know, the location, uh, you know, culture and uh, different audience. But uh, one thing that I'm very careful about is that um, I don't want to sort of uh, self-label or self-categorize uh, as a Chinese artist or as an American artist or as California artist. So I just think, you know, my, the, all these different life experiences uh, filter through uh, my work. They get into my work, sometimes in a subconscious way. I grew up in China until, you know, age uh, 26 or so. So the, a lot, you know, the culture, history of China, of course, uh, has left, left a mark uh, in my work. But part of my subject also comes from my living experience in, in, the, U, in the U.S. Uh, you know, my, uh, there's a large body of works about the Iraq War, about, you know, uh, terrorism and uh, Western books, you know, so you can, you can f get a little bit uh, of a taste of this different uh, subject in this show because you, we have Chinese newspapers, there are, there are uh, uh, English newspapers, there's even a German paper. I painted uh, uh, Spanish newspapers before, um, but, uh, you know, mostly they are in uh, English or Chinese, which I could read. So I see a lot of mass media communications component in your artwork. So can you explain what makes you become so interested in embracing those mass media uh, communications components, like even the journalism, the newspaper? Right. You know those components to your artwork. Mm -hmm. uh, how I become interested in that? Yeah. yeah. Right. I started using news photos from very early on, the beginning of my, my career in the mid-90s. Uh, at the beginning was the, the subject, and then I'm, I become more aware of the way we, we perceive the world, we, the way we, uh, we, we, we get the information. So then I'm more conscious about uh, working with images that are mediated and pay more attention to the medium itself, you know, be the medium books or, or newspapers, or, or internet images. I always so all, all those all those uh, images are always uh, put in quotation mark either by the way of stacking up or you know having a, the the headline part of a headline or have a watermarks from the internet. Um, and uh, well, I I've uh, focused on uh, books and newspaper for the longest p time, uh, partially because. Uh, print media has, you know, been under challenge, you know, by the, the rise of uh, digital media and the internet. 
uh, and has become more or less, you know, books are obviously kind of relics and even newspapers are becoming kind of modern relics. And so, you know, uh, to, to, to make something that's more permanent uh, of an object that is sort of transient, for me, is something uh, in interesting about it. So I'm aware of the, the you know, the, the challenge that uh, print media is facing and, and that's, the, you know, perhaps uh, why that I have, uh, you know, continued to, to uh, deal with the subject for so long. Does this kind of answer your question? <laughs>